I did, we didn't have to invoke, you know, Cash, the great Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, and flip like <laughs> Madama Butterfly and sting like Cozy. <laughs> George's mouth can't beat what George's hands can't see. I don't know. <laughs> On the Dallas Opera Network, you're listening to Opera Box Score. Uh, let's get Wherever you are, however you're listening, it is America's talk radio show about opera. It's Opera Box Score. I'm George Cedarquist, joined this week by Weston Williams and our guest co-host, stage director Amy Hutchison. All right, this week we go inside the huddle with Amy to find out how she and her career survived when COVID hit opera land. And then Amy and I go head to head in an epic five round TKO with two deep rosters of stage directors battling it out for best productions. If you're watching on TDO, make sure you subscribe to that podcast. Get the full show. Stitcher, Spotify, you're going to click follow. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, just hit the plus sign. It's that easy. And of course, send us a voice memo. Email us your hot takes on what we're talking about. Get your voice heard, operaboxscore at gmail.com. You're going to get OBS merch, beer coaster, lapel pin, just for sharing that hot wow. take. what a deal. It's great merch, Weston. It's great to see you. Uh, it's good to see you too, George. And I'm really glad to be hanging out with you instead of all of the little flies that have been uh, around Chicago land this week. Uh, let me tell you, folks, if you don't live in Chicago, there is one day out of the year, if you're right next to the lake, where they come out and they mate. And it's the worst day of the entire year. You're spitting them out. It's a, it's a real mess. I'm bu- in my bunker hiding from them as we speak. So it's good to talk some opera with you. Amy Hutchison on the show with us as well. We're going to do a full intro in the moment. Amy, great to have you with us. It's great to be here. Have you been flies attacked by flies? <laughs> I have not been attacked by any flies, but maybe it's because I'm on the I'm closer to the west side. I'm, You're safe. I'm, I'm not on the lake. <laughs> A <laughs> little bit of sports talk before we get going. The WNBA champs, the Chicago Sky, our very own Sky, they're going to kick off their season this week, go for those back-to-back championships. They're also hosting the All-Star Game this year as well. A lot. I mean, happening. it makes sense because the stars are in the sky. I, that, no. <laughs> Let's talk some opera. Chalk Talk on Opera Box Score. We're doing a TKO, but it's not a normal TKO. We're doing something a little bit different this time because usually we're pitting singers against each other, but we are in a very fun position tonight where we have two very talented directors uh, and George Cedarquist. Uh, and uh, we are here <laughs> to- Amy Hutchison, <laughs> dare I add. And so we are here. Uh, what I've devised for you, I've put on my referee shirt, so I'm ready to go. Uh, what we have here you is are a five- in your referee shirt. That's I- <laughs> That's <laughs> for, excellent. for the uh, listeners to the podcast who aren't seeing the visual right now, I either look like a referee or the guy from Beetlejuice. Take your pick. <laughs> uh, so we are doing um, uh, a lightning round. We're doing five operas. I picked five operas for you that I feel exemplify the areas in in which a opera director has to excel. And you have both picked uh, a pool of directors, which you have to choose from. You can't choose the same one. Uh, and uh, we're, we're going to go through and you're going to try to convince me why in, a, I don't know, about a minute or less, uh, why they, your director should be directing these operas. And at the end, maybe we'll announce the winner. Maybe we won't. I don't know. I'm just Beetlejuice. So we're going to start with the first opera pick, which in my mind is like the sort of gold standard uh, in terms of something that if you are an opera director, you will probably be asked to do a lot, right? And that, of course, is La Boheme by Puccini. It's a deceptively difficult opera to direct. Uh, I'm going to start with Amy. Who is your pick to direct La Boheme? I'm going way, way, way out of limb. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know that anyone would choose this director to do Boem, but I just thought, <laughs> you know, Boem is it's something. Everybody's done it. I'm going to confess, I have in all in my entire career, I've never even assisted on Boem. It's remarkable. <laughs> wow, <laughs> okay. that's <I> amazing. <laughs> it's totally bizarre. It's totally bizarre. <laughs> bizarre. And perhaps that, you know, I've done plenty of Puccini, but I've never done Boem. Um, so I thought, well, you know. 
who would do something that was just so completely different than anyone could ever imagine? It's something, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's one of the you know top operas that's always done. And I want to see what Robert Wilson would do. <laughs> that would be different. Can't you just imagine it? Like a, 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 a glacial white set <laughs> that's just, it, it's almost in the middle of nowhere. And... <laughs> And, uh, you know, Parpignol is moving at a snail's pace throughout, just right around and leaving perhaps a little, a little, uh, a, a, a little trail snail of slime, trail. But a little snail trail <laughs> as he just slowly just goes across <laughs> and around the set. Mimi comes in in a, just one single window up at the top with her candle. Uh, and I, the you candle. Know, and I and to even think of what would he do with the cafe? I mean, I I just picture just um, you know a, a, a single t- one single table just emerging up from from the from the <laughs> trap slowly, 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 epically <laughs> through the entire act, and then everyone <laughs> again. It's going to take a little while, but eventually. Um, uh, you know, uh, Musetta is gonna gonna just have a blast and finally get on that table. <laughs> I think that's great, Amy. You're really speaking my language with this production. Uh, I, but we have to turn to George now. George, yeah. who are you gonna put up against Robert Wilson? First and foremost, let me say that now that we finally got rid of Oliver and Matt, we can actually talk about directors and people that matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my pick for Lava OM is Richard Jones who oh. probably has done Bohem at some point. Of course, you might know his production of Hansel and Gretel, which has done Wonderful. the rounds. He's doing the ring cycle at ENO this season. Uh, he did Ario Dante at Lyric last year. Richard Jones' production of La Bohème would be a laugh riot. It would oh. be the funniest production of Bohem <laughs> you'd ever seen. The man's sense of humor is so dark, he mm-hmm. would find the humor not just in act one, which is genuinely amusing, but by the time you get to act three and act four or act two and act one, if it's the Yuval Sharon production of Detroit <laughs> Opera, right, right. It's, it would be just a laugh riot. And that's why people would want to see it. All right. I, it's come to me to make a decision. And uh, if you know me, uh, you know that I love Philip Glass. And because I love Philip Glass <laughs> for this production, of Puccini's La Boheme, I'm going to have to give it to Amy for this round. But that's okay, George. You're about to get another Just chance. Just for sheer audacity. <laughs> Just okay. for the sheer audacity. However, you might have played that trump card too early because now we have to go to uh, what I think is another interesting challenge that directors face. And uh, for me, that is the Baroque repertoire Mm -hmm. because the conventions uh, of like high Baroque, of course, if you want to do something historically uh, informed is very complicated, very specific. So a lot of people tend to go the other way and really like embrace the freedom of audiences, not necessarily knowing what it was supposed to look like and really going off in another direction with it, which is what I really like about a lot of Baroque productions. So George, I'm going to give you the challenge of finding a direct for Giulio Cesare, one of the five operas you know by Handel. Yes. I only know four <laughs> operas by Handel. But Giulio Cesare is one of them. It's such a great piece. <laughs> my pick, looking at my roster of directors, uh, would be Katie Mitchell. Katie Mitchell, British mm. director, mm. has done a lot of theater, actually, a lot of Chekhov, and perhaps more recently, a lot mm. of oratorio, and is kind of a whiz at putting on large-scale interpretations and points of view of oratorio, which can be really tricky to do. If you're working with Handel, da capo aria, the story Mm -hmm. does not move fast. You need someone who can bring, come in hot with a really Mm -hmm. great point of view. And I think Katie Mitchell would do exactly that. This is just the sort of repertoire that she likes to work with. And she's just the sort of person to bring in a unique point of view that can carry you through the three plus hours of this opera. Yeah, that's a good point. That's that's actually a really good pitch. I'm I'm, I'm imagining it now. Uh, so uh, it come, it's up to you, Amy, to see if you can beat that pitch from George. Well, I'm dying to see some Katie Mitchell work, like right now. <laughs> um, uh, I, my pick is Thaddeus Strasberger mm. because I think 
like Ed. Thad, just I just want you to just think about Thad's work is always <laughs> like this man takes epic, like you can't even his his work. First of all, he he does work on on a scale, you know, massive outdoor works. His Turandot, it, it like literally, it's like carved into the side of a mountain and has you know fighters repelling down the side of a mountain <laughs> and people coming in by boat and uh you know and 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 people twirling fire absolutely incredible um so i think with with his chasere again the decadence i think what thad would do it would be you know really visually splendid thinking about thad taking egypt and 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 taking Cleopatra on, like, that's exciting. He has, you know, a, a big history with, with Rome. He had a beautiful, uh, really gorgeous La Clemenza di Tito in LA with gorgeous costumes by Maddie Ulrich, like gorgeous costumes by Maddie. <laughs> um, and I think that, that, you know, his work is so painterly that I think he would, he would really, uh, you know, just milk it, milk it, milk it for all the spectacle and fabulousness that I think is mm. uh, inherent in the piece and really just make it come. It would be surprise after surprise after surprise. He uses the elements, you know, fire, water, all that. And I think that could really come into a, a, a beautiful. Great for Baroque too. Yeah. Really, really nice for that. Yeah. Hmm. Always uh, full of surprises. Oh man, this is actually, a re- I really want to see both of these productions. Um, gosh, uh, I think. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Amy again. I, I think I want to see <gasps> Thaddeus's production. George? That's two. That is two for Amy. None for George yet. Good call. Bad call on Opera Box Score. Good call, bad call is how we always take you home wherever you are. However, you're listing something really great that our panel has seen or heard or watched or something pretty dreadful. With our guest co host, <laughs> we're going to kick it off, Amy Hutchison. Well, I want to say a good call is a future good call. I hope that people will be paying attention to the fact that Detroit, speaking of Black Opera, uh, that uh, Detroit Opera, which is the, the, the rebranded, sort of correct, corrected name of Rightly so. formerly Michigan Opera Theater, it's now Detroit Opera, which is wonderful. Uh, is producing uh, Anthony Davis's X, The Life and Times oh, yeah. of Malcolm X. And I could not be more thrilled. I'm going to try and make, get my butt to uh, Detroit, uh, <laughs> May 14th, 19th, and 22nd. So um, hop on a train, get a road trip, do what you need to do. <laughs> it is going to be the place to be. It's Take a us beautiful with you. opera house. <laughs> I was there. I did a tra- the Traviata that opened the, the opera house. It's a fabulous mm-hmm. fabulous um hall to experience opera in and i mean i just this cast devon tines is malcolm whitney morrison who just actually had yet another just incredible triumph in fire shut up in my bones as right. even going on as the as the second well she wasn't even originally second cast she was the understudy um in that and just woo. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> uh, anyway, it's it's really going to be thrilling, and um, I, I'm going to be there for it. Weston Williams. My good call this week, I have been listening to a new recording. Uh, this is the uh, Rene Jacobs uh, uh, with the Freiburg Baroque Orchestra doing the Freischutz. Um, now, this is not your, your dad's mm. Freischutz. This is a radio play version where they have redone some of the dialogue to modernize it. I don't speak enough German to know how how modern it is. Um, but they've also, because uh, obviously there's, if you remember, there's a prologue at the beginning to explain some things because originally that was going to be part of the opera. It got cut, uh, Weber regretted it, and he added in the spoken dialogue. So what Jacobs has done is take music from other Weber projects, and I think a little bit of Schubert, and put those to text and fill in some of those holes in the opera. And when you talk about sound effects and like top notch, like completely hammy in the best possible way, um, uh, speaking during the, for the speaking parts, especially in the Wolf's Glen scene, it mm-hmm. is a delight. It is so much fun to hear. It's a refreshing sort of new take that uh, on the opera oh. that really sort of 
preserve. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <but> like <laughs> it's just like that. Radio you're, you're play. Stealing it. We're gonna get a. a a copyright claim on that because of that. Uh, but no, this is a, a great little uh, radio production, uh, as it were. And it's a studio recording, too, which is pretty rare for operas nowadays. So highly recommend you check that out. It's a lot of fun. My sixth grader is in the middle school musical, which is <gasps> Into the Woods Junior, Aww, which is wonderful. fantastic. Please, Mrs. Worthington, don't put your daughter on the stage, as Mel <laughs> Howard said. But um, enough about him. We can't keep him you off know, the stage. It, uh, it, <laughs> It got me thinking, I would love to see a ring cycle junior. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, directed by... Yes. By Amy Hutchison. <laughs> perfect, perfect. That's it for I this love week's children's opera of America's Dog Radio Show about opera, our announcer. It's Norm Waddell. He's at normwaddell.com. Again, if you're watching on TDO, you make sure you subscribe to the podcast, get the full show, Stitcher and Spotify, you click follow. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, just hit the plus sign. Send us a voice memo. Email us your hot takes, operaboxscore, gmail.com. You're going to get an OBS beer coaster and an OBS lapel pin just for sharing your own hot take. Our creative consultant is Oliver Camacho. Our audio and video editor is Weston Williams. For our guest co-host, Amy Hutchison, I'm George Cedarquist, asking you to continue the conversation about operas. You try and stage Act 2 of Lava M with an 80-person chorus in a single three-hour rehearsal. <laughs> We're back with an all-new show next week when we highlight the key players in America's summer opera season this year. Plus, you get more opera headlines, more hot takes, and more notes from that dress rehearsal. Join us.